This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. Either he finished the works or he didn't. And we got to decide right now, either it's done or we're trying to get it done. And Jesus will never answer the prayer when you pray to him to do what he's already done. So check your prayer. Are you asking God to do something he's already done? Download and stay connected with the Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar. Keep the Word of God at the forefront of your mind with these powerful and uplifting messages. With each message that you download and stream, you gain revelation of the fullness of God's grace. The Changing Your World podcast brings you life-changing wisdom right at your fingertips, no matter where you are. Subscribe today on Apple Podcast, Spotify, or your preferred podcast platform. This is your world. So let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know you love is here to stay. Oh, it's time we live a new life. Let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. We are changed. Law voids faith. Your self-effort and your performance trying to get what Jesus has already done voids faith. Faith and rule keeping as a means to relate to God are in direct opposition to each other. Faith and rule keeping. Rule keeping is what you see under the law by Moses. Faith is required under the grace by Jesus. Faith and rule keeping are in direct opposition to one another. They are mutually exclusive. They are incompatible. They are unable to exist together in harmony. Faith and rule keeping will always be opposite of one another. And somehow during this age of performance-based Christianity, we've tried to put them together and it doesn't work. So if you choose the rule keeping route, you got to remember that you got to do it 100%. James chapter 2.10, for if you violate in just one, then you're guilty of breaking the whole thing. You just can't keep the ones you want to keep. <laughs> well, I'm going to keep this one right here, but I ain't, I'm, I'm going to break the, the ribs one because 4th of July coming up. Tomorrow. No, you can't. <laughs> it's all or none. All right, everybody take a deep breath now because we're uh, getting ready to go somewhere like a Star Trek, you know? Those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. Now, remember, Paul didn't say you're cursed because you broke the law. He says you're cursed because you are of the law. You are under the law. Now, to explain this and to paint the picture, I'm going to use something that we use a lot. This is where I'm going to need a lot of prayer to articulate this. Proverbs chapter 18 in verse 21, to illustrate this point I'm trying to make of the law of faith. Very familiar with this. Verse 21, let's read it out loud together. Ready to read. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it. All right, now, if you, if you, if you read this through the lens of the law, if you read this through the eyes of the law, we will believe that our words will be more powerful than what Christ has done. If you read this through the lens of the law, what it says to you is you're going to have to either speak death or life, 
What what you do with your words are going to be why you deserve what you get. But it's still part of the merit system. It's still part of that system that says, I'm doing this to deserve this. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it, they shall eat fruit thereof. Now, just hold your horses. I can hear, see some of you thinking loud right now. Uh-uh, just chill. <laughs> now, here's the question. Here's what I want you to think about. Am I blessed because I made a positive confession? Or am I blessed because Jesus has redeemed me from the curse? Don't answer. Think. Am I blessed because I made a positive confession? Because if you're blessed because you made a positive confession, that would, make, that would make you a part of the merit system, and now you are of the works of the law. Now, I'm going to show you how this is supposed to be used. We've been having the cart pull the horse instead of the horse pull the cart. Now, it's obvious, according to Galatians, I am blessed because Jesus has delivered me from the curse Therefore, I'm blessed through Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Uh, but now watch this now. When I believe that Christ has redeemed me from the curse, when I believe that I've been redeemed from the curse, I will speak. I'll speak not only will I speak, but I will speak what I believe with power and I'll speak with I believe with authority when I believe that I've been delivered from the curse. Where are you getting that from? 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 13. Watch this now. 2 Corinthians 4, 13. We having the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believe. And therefore, in other words, I believe, therefore I sp I've spoken. He says, we believe and therefore we speak. But what we've been doing is we've been speaking because we're not sure it's done. But when you believe that it's done, you can't help but to speak. Because when you believe that you're blessed, you're going to eventually say that you're blessed. When you believe that you're healed, you're going to say that you're healed. When you believe that you're prosperous, you're going to say that you're prosperous. So I say it because I know I got it instead of saying it, trying to get it. I know I'm healed, so I got to say it. So I'm not saying I'm healed to try to get healed. I'm already healed. That's why I can say I'm healed. I'm not saying I'm prosperous to try to become prosperous. I already know I'm prosperous. That's why I say I'm prosperous. I'm not giving so I can get something. I already know I got it. That's why I give it. So the power and the authority comes when I believe first and therefore I speak. My speaking is born out of what I believe. Because if you're just speaking and you don't believe it's already done, it doesn't come out with power and authority. But when you know in your Noah, when you know that Jesus has already made you righteous, when you know that he's already redeemed you, when you know he's already healed you, then when you open your mouth out, up what's on the inside of you flows out with power and the devil has no defense. It takes faith to believe it's done. But when you find yourself having to do, to qualify or to try to get it done, either he finished the works or he didn't. And we got to decide right now, either it's done or we're trying to get it done. And Jesus will never answer the prayer when you pray to him to do what he's already done. So check your prayer. Are you asking God to do something he's already done? When I was diagnosed with cancer, I did not spend my time begging God to heal me. I spent my time speaking out my faith that I already knew I was healed.
I don't say I'm prosperous because I don't, I'm wondering if I'm going to have money. I'm prosperous if ain't a dime in the bank. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And when I speak what I believe, I'm making withdrawals for what has already been done. Yes, sir. You see what I'm saying? Christians have had the cart pulling the horse. Now, this is strong what I'm about to say. When we take our ground for blessing under the merit system, we're buying into the karma life. The karma life simply says you have to do good in order to get good. The karma life says you do bad to get bad. And Christians have bought into this mindset. It's actually the doctrine of Buddhism and other religions. I'm going to read some things to you. I had to go and do a study on Buddhism to see if it was so. Karma literally means to do. It's the belief that we are created, that we create our happiness and our misery. And therefore, we are the designers of our own destiny. So it is said that of a young Buddhist disciple seeking truth, he asked Buddha this question. What is the cause? What is the reason, O oh Lord, that we find amongst mankind the short-lived, the long-lived, that we find the healthy and the diseased, that we find the ugly and the beautiful, those lacking influence and the powerful. We find the poor, the rich. We find the lowborn, the highborn. We find the ignorant and the wise. And he claimed the answer was that he heard was that all living beings have actions or karma as their own, their inheritance, their congenial cause, that, they, that their kinsmen, um, their kinsmen and their refuge, all of that is karma that differentiates beings into a low or a high state. So in other words, we get what we deserve and inherit what our parents deserve. Now let me ask you something. Is that the life you want? No. I don't want what I deserve. <laughs> and I don't want what my parents deserve. Because if the truth be told, all of us without a Jesus would deserve hell. I'll never want what I deserve. Paul is saying that it's all about what we believe. Are we of faith or are we of the works of the law? Has the Father qualified us or not? Now let's compare these centurion with this Canaanite woman. Go to Matthew chapter 8, 5 through 10. See, I thought it was cool because that's what I've been taught all my life. God challenged me one time. He says, what if what you've been taught may not be altogether the whole truth? And he took some of my heroes. And you know what I told God? I said, it, it, that ain't, that ain't going to be no problem because this person taught it to me and that person taught it to me and that person taught it to me. And he let me go. Didn't say nothing else to me about it for another 10 years. Wow. And he asked me uh, once more time, what if what you heard wasn't the whole thing? And I, I, I just, you know, but God, I got to be saying what everybody else is saying, don't. I'm going to be an outcast. He says, well, I'm not going to be able to use you because you're trying to flow with everybody else instead of flowing with me. Now, 
Watch this now. Jesus uh, was entered into Capernaum, and there came unto him a centurion beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou wouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I'm a man under authority, I have soldiers under me, and I say to his man, Go, and uh, he goeth, and to another come, and he cometh, and to my servant do this and doeth that. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said unto them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found, watch this, so great faith. No, not in Israel. Not in Israel. Not even with those people that had a covenant with, of law. All right, now, flip over there to Matthew 15, 21 through 28. So now here's a centurion man. Now you're going to look at a Canaanite woman. Matthew 15, 21, 28. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Ty and Sidon, 22. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he said, he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Remember, Jesus is fulfilling the law that nobody, no, nobody could fulfill uh, that, of Jewish people because he, uh, they made it with him. And this was a Gentile. Now watch this. Then came she and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. She said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Now, I said, Lord, there's two different occasions here. This is really interesting because there are a lot of different things going on here. One is a centurion. The other one is a Canaanite. One is a man. The other one is a woman. But you told both of them, which in my eyes seemed like they were so different, that they had something called great faith. So there had to be something similar within these two situations that Jesus saw that moved on him to call it great faith. And I thought, mm, when you look at the thing, mm, and then I saw it. What was it that they both had in common? They were Gentiles. They didn't know nothing about the law. They only knew about Jesus. They didn't know nothing about the law. All the, and, and remember, they were Gentiles. There was nobody Christian at the time because Jesus was still alive. They were not invited to be a part of that law, but they knew that they could trust Jesus. They didn't know about thou shalt this and thou shalt that. They could only see Jesus, and that's where he wants us today. He wants us to get to a point where we might not know all 613, but we know him. We trust him. We have faith in him. See, in the, in the Garden of Eden, that's what they knew when they were with the tree of life before they ate of the forbidden fruit. But as soon as they ate of the forbidden fruit, they turned into self-righteousness and tried to dress themselves when God had already clothed them with his glory. Yeah. And as soon as they stepped into their own effort, trying to clothe themselves, and look what they, look what they picked out for clothes, fig leaves. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and say, we need a savior. And look what he says in Philippians 4.19. Now I'm moving into the second half of this message because now I got to prove all this. You know, you got a hundred scriptures going through your head. I gotta, and I got to prove all this now. I'm trying to get you to expel self-effort. I'm trying to get you to get out of performance-based Christianity. 
it's hindering your results. You know this scripture, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Say this out loud. Jesus is my supply house. Jesus is my supply house. Say it again. Jesus is my supply house. Jesus is my supply house. All right, now listen to this. God gave the law to show that religion doesn't work. No religion in this world has a savior except for Christianity. They all expect you to save yourself by behaving yourself. And only the true God of heaven provided a savior who could redeem us from every curse so that we could be blessed by simply receiving his grace. Amen. So here's what Jesus said in Mark chapter 9:23. And then he said it again in Mark 5, 36. He said, only believe. And we thought, no, 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 no. He couldn't admit that. He must be believed and do this. Because you don't understand when you believe, action is born out of your belief. You believe that that chair has the ability to hold you. When you came in there here, you believed it so much, it moved you to sit down. You don't do what you don't believe. If you didn't believe that that chair wouldn't hold you, if that chair had three legs, you'd still been standing up looking at it. <laughs> Action will be born out of what you believe. But somebody's always asking, but what about works? What about works? You got to do something. What about the work? You want to know about the work? Look at St. John chapter 6. 29. St. John 6, 29, in the New Living Translation, if you will. St. John 6, 29. We're so demand, has that, we, when you have that demand mentality, it's always going to be Jesus plus something else. You just can't believe that Jesus is enough. You're always adding something to him. All right, now watch this. So what about the work? What about the work? Look at this scripture. In the uh, New Living Translation, please. You know, that, that'll do good, good, too. Jesus told them, this is the only work God wants from you. <laughs> Believe in the one he has sent. This is the only work that God wants from you. Believe in the one he has sent. I'm not, I'm not feeding the hungry to try to get blessed. I'm blessed, that's why I feed the hungry. I'm not clothing the naked to try to get blessed. I'm blessed so I clothe the naked. I am doing for others because of my belief in what Jesus has already done for me. He said, the only work I want you to do is to believe in the one that he has sent. Come on now. Yes, sir. But as long as you keep trying to sweat, trying to get God to do what he's already done, we got to change our tense. We keep approaching God as if he hadn't finished it. And then you keep coming up with things for you to do what an insult to God, seriously? So you're going to do something that Jesus didn't already do. So you're going to take your theology and your religion and you're going to put it together and you now going to get the job done. When he said, the job is done. Under the covenant of the law, it's doing. Under the covenant of grace, it's done. It's done. Did you hear the message of grace and think that being free from the law of Moses meant you were free from morals? You're not the only one. Creflo Dollar clears up this misunderstanding and shows us how to live free of guilt and shame in his two-message series, Freedom from the Law. Jesus came and says, I'm going to set you free 
from failure, from condemnation, from guilt, and I'm going to set you free from the penalty of not being able to do it. Jesus has put everything upon himself so you can finally worship God. So you're no longer trying to keep the law of rule keeping to try to be moral. Instead, you are trusting in the Holy Spirit who will come and work in you and produce morality through your life. Own a copy for a love gift of $15 or more. Call the number on your screen or visit CreflodollarMinistries.org to get yours today. Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app brings you live church services direct to your smart TV and much more. Don't miss a service and catch up on the latest messages from Creflo and Taffy Dollar like No More Worries, Overcoming Uncertainty, and countless other life-changing series streaming on the Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app. You'll also get access to Changing Your World Network, streaming grace messages and exclusive content 24 hours a day right in the app. It is now possible because of Jesus for man to be reconciled back to God. It is God's desire. It is his plan that we walk in truth, not be deceived. So consequently, we won't deceive other people. Get unlimited streaming through Roku, Amazon, and Apple TV absolutely free. Visit your app store, search Creflo Dollar Ministries, and download the Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app now to start streaming. For more information, visit CreflodollarMinistries.org. I think you will be amazed at what Creflo Dollar Ministry does every day around the world. Testimonies come in from all over about the impact we have. And I wish you could see the kids we feed. Their lives are changed and impacted for the better because of you, our givers. The seeds you sow into this ministry make a mark that, uh, that can never be erased. And I want to thank you so much for your financial contributions into the kingdom of God and into this ministry. If God has placed it on your heart to support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to CreflodollarMinistries.org. God bless you. Creflo and Taffy Dollar love connecting with you. And here at World Changers, we understand the importance of using technology to do just that. We're constantly working to bring the gospel of Christ to thousands of viewers and followers around the world. And we want you to get involved. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. We want to make the word of grace available throughout every voice of social media. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe. 